Welcome to the ELHT Pharmacy CERNA Millennium eLearning video. This video is intended to give pharmacy staff an overview in some of the main elements and functions of the CERNA Millennium EPR or Electronic Patient Record in relation to their job role. New pharmacy staff members will then be compliant with their mandatory CERNA training once this video has been watched in full. Further help, advice and support is available from the Clinical Informatics team and the IMNT Training and Support Officers. To contact the Training and Support Officers within System Support at Royal Blackburn Teaching Hospital, please telephone 01254 732052, internal extension 82052, or email us at systems.trainingqueries at tlht.nhs.uk. You can also contact the Clinical Informatics team for CERNA Clinical Enquiries on 01254 735101, extension 85101, or email the team at elanx at elht.nhs.uk. There are also hundreds of QRGs or quick reference guides and videos in eCoach. An overview of eCoach is covered in this e-learning video. With the introduction of the EPR, we need to remind all staff of the importance of unauthorised access and the possible repercussions for the trust, the patient and the staff member involved. Examples of accessing information where you do not have a legitimate reason for doing so include accessing your own record, looking at the records of colleagues, friends or your children, accessing the records of people of media interest, or logging on for someone else even if a colleague has forgotten their password or smart card. The implications of accessing unauthorised information is an abuse of your position, and doing so without a legitimate reason can mean serious consequences and you may be subject to the trust disciplinary policy. The Information Commission's Office also reserves the right to prosecute individuals. For further information, please contact the Information Governors Department on telephone 01254 732 internal extension 82122, or email ig.issues at elht.nhs.uk. Before attempting to log into CERNA, first of all, please ensure you're logged onto the computer or workstation on wheels with your own Windows credentials. Your Windows username should then appear towards the right of the screen. Once you've logged onto the computer with your own Windows credentials, then you need to access CERNA. To do that, you're looking for two icons on the desktop. One will say CERNA Clinical EPR and one CERNA Non-Clinical EPR. All the admin staff access CERNA via the non-clinical route. Therefore, all clinicians, including pharmacists and technicians, access it via the CERNA Clinical EPR link. Double click on the icon. You may then be prompted to input your username and password. This is your Windows or computer login. Once you put those details in, press return or click login. Your Microsoft Edge web browser may then give you the option to save the password to the computer. Either click got it or never. I will select got it so that I don't have to input this in future on this particular machine. What then appears are four folders. Cert, Production, Train and Uncategorised. You will only ever access the Production folder, so open that folder. The CERNA Millennium applications then appear on screen. The vast majority of these you will never use, but the one you will open on a daily basis is PowerChart. Click on PowerChart to open the application. This is the patient's EPR. You may be prompted to open the file from the top right of your screen. If so, please click Open to open the file. You can now see PowerChart is starting to load up. Please be patient while the application loads up on screen. In the meantime, I can minimise my Edge browser. As you can now see, PowerChart has loaded up, presenting me the eCoach screen. The eCoach screen may not immediately appear once PowerChart loads. If that's the case, look for the eCoach icon in the toolbars at the top of the screen and select it. If you can't find it, try clicking View and then selecting eCoach from this list. eCoach contains hundreds of quick reference guides, otherwise known as QRGs, and a number of training videos as well. They are grouped into various sections. If I scroll down the screen, for instance, there's a section for medication management, which contains four items. If I want to see the full list of all the QRGs and videos contained within medication management, I will click the View All icon. To open a QRG or video, click on the link. 
you are then navigated to the Cerno Wiki website. If necessary, click Accept All to accept all cookies on this site. Once you've done that, click on the image and the QRG or video should load up. Please be patient as sometimes this can take a little while. Once the QRG loads up on screen, it'll contain instructions that you can follow to perform that particular activity within PowerChart. The quick reference guides are only a couple of pages long at the most. Most of them are one page in length. We would not recommend printing these and QRGs and videos are added to eCoach on a regular basis. To quit this screen, close the web browser. This returns you back to PowerChart. An alternate way of searching for a quick reference guide or video is to click on this magnifying glass to the right of the screen. Once you've done that, you'll need to type in three or more letters contained within the description of the QRG or video. For instance, if I'm struggling to find how to create a patient list, if I type in the word list, all the QRGs and videos containing the word list then appear. Locate the required one and select it. Once again, you've taken to the Cerner Wiki website where you can then click on the image and view the QRG properly. All the QRGs contain contact details for either the system trainers within system support or the clinical informatics team. Next, we will take a look at patient search. Wherever possible, you should select your patient from a patient list, such as the multipurpose task list, the MPTL, or the pharmacy patient monitor, or pharmacy care organizer. If you're not using one of those three options, then you'll search for your patient using the patient search option to the right of the screen. The patient search option will default to name. This can be changed using this little arrow to MRN. MRN stands for medical records number, otherwise known as the patient's hospital number. Some patient hospital numbers will start with the letters RXR, but any patients newly registered into the system since we went live in June of 2023 will not have an RXR prefix. If it does have an RXR prefix, please input it here now. This is an example. Once I put the number in, press return, and the system performs a patient search. I'm just going to click cancel and show you patient search via a different method. Instead, I'm going to click the magnifying glass next to MRN up here. This brings up the patient search window that you saw a second ago, but from here I can type in the patient's MRN number, or NHS number, or surname, forename, gender, etc. Wherever possible, please use the patient's MRN, or failing that, the NHS number. I'm going to put the patient's hospital number here in now. Then I can either press return or click search. Once again, a patient search is performed. At the top of the screen, you'll see the patient's hospital number, their name, gender, date of birth, etc. And then further down, we've got the encounter window. At the bottom of the patient search window are the patient's encounters. Each time the patient attends hospital, either as an outpatient, inpatient, a &E attendance, etc., an encounter is created in Cerna. Select the correct encounter dependent on the search you're making. In this particular scenario, I'm selecting the inpatient encounter that's active, as you can see here, by clicking on it, so it's in blue, before clicking OK. Please note that certain data, such as patient letters or medications, will always appear regardless of the encounter that's been selected. The patient's record now appears on screen in the patient banner. As you can see, the patient banner contains the patient's name, the allergies, if any, have been recorded, and possibly flags and alerts as well. These are clickable to open these things so you can see them in more detail. Uh, child protection information service, if it's been performed. Potentially the patient's target discharge date if they're an inpatient, the patient's age, date of birth, etc. Their NHS number, this is a test patient by the way, hospital number, gender, and then the encounter detail, details I selected a moment ago from the search. Clicking on the patient's name will display the general information window where you can see the patient's name, date of birth, gender, etc., but also their address and contact details, providing this has been recorded within PowerChart. I'll click OK to remove this window. 
clicking on allergies will display those allergies where further can be recorded and these can also be modified by a right click. An important part of PowerChart is the need to refresh your screen on a regular basis. As you can see it's been 24 minutes since I last refreshed my screen. Clicking on the refresh icon will ensure that I'm displaying the most current up-to-date information for that patient record. As one of the IT trainers within System Support, my PowerChart account is defaulting to Nurse View. But when the pharmacist or its pharmacy technician logs in, theirs will default to Pharmacist View. So I'm just going to change this so it looks like yours. You will not need to do this. As I said, your account will default to this view whenever you log into PowerChart. One useful feature of PowerChart is the ability to look at recent patient records. That's available next to the name search in the top right of your screen. If I click on this, it displays the last nine patients I've selected. To comply with data protection, I'm obscuring these patients' names, but otherwise you select the required patient from the list and it opens that patient's record using that patient encounter you selected previously. One way of viewing the patient's medication list is to hover over the word menu, so a blue menu appears, and then click on medication list. The patient's medication list is now displayed. There's a filter available here where you can change the displayed medications to those you prefer to see on screen. If I click this, it's currently displaying all active medications from my advanced filters. If I wish to see discontinued and or cancelled and or completed medications, etc., select them as required and then click apply. Those medications are now displayed on screen. To return them back to the way they were, click on it again. I can either deselect them or using the display drop down, return back to all active medications, then click apply and my list is updated accordingly. What I'm looking at at the moment is this patient's medications from Burner General Ward 3. I can see the patient's location, the date they were admitted and the time. From here, I can see the name of the medication, the ordering clinician, the status, when the medication was prescribed, whether the stop date, who last updated it, and when it was last updated, and any comments. This whole screen is customizable, so if I wish to display different information, all I simply do is right click anywhere on screen, and then from this list, choose Customize View. If I just move this out of the way a little bit, you can see that I've got various columns here represented by the selected columns in the right of this panel. If I didn't want to see order comments, for instance, which is currently over here, I'd click on it, click on remove, click OK, and the order comments column is now removed. If I right click any one screen, return back to customize view, and click on order comments again, or any other column I prefer, click on add, it then moves over to the right. If I wish to move the order comment further to the left of my screen, I simply select it, click on the blue arrows to position it where I wish to, before clicking OK, and the order comment column is now represented here. These can be widened by hovering in this general area and then drag to the left or drag to the right accordingly. Just returning back to Customize View for a second, you can group orders by different options. The default is group orders by encounter and then date, but these can be changed using the drop downs. As can sorting the orders by a different option than the one that's currently active. If you make any changes, of course, you'll click OK. I'm going to leave these settings as they are. So they're grouped currently by encounter, represented here in the blue line. Then by date, three weeks ago in this particular section, scrolling further down. There's another encounter further down the list where we can see again the hospital site, the unit and the date and time. And then any orders or documented medications listed underneath. Scrolling back to the top of the list, we can see each medication is represented by an icon. Hover over the icon to find out more information. 
In this example, this is the prescription that the patient will have gone home on. Scrolling further down, we can see a hospital icon here where this particular medication was prescribed while the patient was an inpatient on the ward. The scroll icon represents any documented medication by history, as in the patient's home meds. There are many other icons represented within PowerChart. All you simply do is hover over the icon to give you more information. In this example with the gabapentin, this order is part of a gabapentin care plan. The pestle and mortar icon represents orders that have yet to be verified by a pharmacist. Once the pharmacist verifies the medications and clinically checks them for safety, the icon will be removed. All the column headers can be clicked to change the displayed view accordingly. Now that I've clicked on the order name slash details column, the displayed list is presented alphabetically. Clicking on order comments, we'll do a similar thing. Order and clinician, now displayed alphabetically by surname. Status column, the start column, and so forth. The medications within there are numerous options 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 available on the select of any medication. These have been created if to an example, make it as easy as possible right on this to prescribe and otherwise manage them. I can, for instance, within go any to order sense, to show the name of the medication and find out more the dosage, details about the medication, the route, including the, the history. In this particular example, this has been described well. by this particular doctor. In this doctor. particular example, we can also see the quantity. And they've been modified medications later within on power charts by can these only be ordered staff by authorized staff, staff time such as doctors reasons. and nurse prescribers. The prescriber so can window easily window discontinue a medication right using this column. Earlier, we took a look at the patient's home meds within the medication list, which we can see here as identified by the scroll icon, uh, and then further down as well. But we can also look at home medications in isolation by clicking the Documents Medication by History tab just here. From here, we can just see the home medications on their own, as identified by the scroll icon. With regard to this particular patient, these home meds have since been prescribed while the patient was on the ward. So the amlopidine here was documented and then prescribed by the doctor during the inpatient admission. If we hover over it, we can see the start date. To add medication history to the patient's record, click the Add icon just here. As you can see, it's going to be added to the patient's record as document medication history. It's not recommended to have the Add Order screen maximized at this particular point because when you're adding meds, you can't see which meds you're adding to the patient record from the screen behind. So I'm just going to click on this icon here and now the add order screen is a little bit smaller so that when I add them, they'll appear in the screen of the background and I'll be able to see them. I'm going to add aspirin 75 milligram. Start typing the name of the medication and if you want to, the dosage as well. And then the appropriate order sentences will be displayed for you to select. In this scenario, I'm going to select this. And as you can see, the aspirin 75 milligram is just behind. But in the scenario, I've not finished. I'm going to add bisoprolol as well. You need three or more characters before the system will identify potential matches. I'm going to go with the 3.75 milligram uh, once a day oral tablet. As you can see, both these medications are starting to appear in the pending home medication. Once I've signed these off, they'll appear further within the main list. I'm now going to close the add order window by clicking the X and then selecting the aspirin from the pending home medications list. I'm going to ensure that the dosage, route of administration, frequency and further details are recorded as required. If the indication field is already populated with an indication, then please don't change that. But if it's blank, type came in on. If the patient brought this particular med with them at admission, then select yes. But if instead the patient's supply is still at home, then select yes, pod H, just over here. Record the day's supply. In this scenario, I'm recording the patient has 14 days supply of that particular medication, whether it's stored in a blister pack or dosset box, otherwise known as an MDS. I'll say yes in this scenario. The storage location, if appropriate, I'll go with room temperature. 
and perhaps special instructions such as police Chris tablets. You can also use the order comments tab for inputting any further information and the adherence tab for changing perhaps the status from still taking as prescribed to another option and where you got the information from and the last dose date and time. I'm now going to select the bisopolo and again complete the details as required. The GP to continue and comments of pharmacy fields will be left for the doctor to complete at discharge. Once all the details of the pending home medication list have been completed, click this button here, Document History, to save these documented meds to the patient's record. If any details now need to be changed, I can simply right click the medication and left click Modify to make any further changes before clicking Orders for Signature and Sign. That updates what I've just recorded. Or instead I could right click and void it perhaps if this was for the incorrect episode of care, incorrect patient or prescribed in error. I'll select incorrect patient, orders for signature and sign. It's processing currently. If I refresh my screen, that has now been removed. If I want to display those voided meds, I'm going to go back to my filter, select deleted from the inactive status column, Click Apply and they reappear. We will now take a look at this patient's drug chart. To open a drug chart, hover your mouse over the word Menu to the left of the screen. The blue menu appears. From this list, click Drug Chart. The drug chart displays all inpatient medications that the staff nurses will use to administer those meds. There's a time view on the left of the screen showing scheduled, unscheduled, PRN, continuous titratable, etc. These can be deselected if you don't wish to see those particular meds. For example, if I don't wish to see the PRN meds, simply untick this and the PRN meds are no longer visible. I'll select it again so PRN meds become visible again. And there they are. Within the main part of the drug chart, you'll have a grey banner displaying the criteria on which the medications are displayed. Currently this says 27th of December. To change this, right click and select change search criteria or one of the other options. I'll go for the top one. I can now change the from and or the to date to display medication that needs to be administered during that time frame or which meds were previously administered within that time frame. I'll put this back a few days. And as you can see, the list has changed. You then have a column for medications, along with the dates and times that those meds were administered, and also when they are due to be administered next. Within the medications column, this information is displayed as an order sentence. It displays the medication name, the dosage, the route, the frequency, when it was started, and any further relevant information. In the case of the vitamin D chewable tablet, we can next see that this med is not due till 6 p.m. on the 28th of December. And in this particular example, it was given on this date quite a bit earlier, at quarter past 11. If you hover over these details, it will display the patient's name along with the dosage, the route, when it was last given, the date and time, and who performed that activity within CERNA. Looking further to the right, I can next see this particular medication is next due on the 29th of December at 12 noon. So clearly this is twice a day, lunch and tea, which bears out when you read the information. When you first open the drug chart, you'll have a yellow column so the nurses can see any medications due at that moment in time. I can also look back and see when a medication was left administered. Again, for the calcium vitamin D, I can see one tablet was given at 11.15 on the 28th of December. 
double clicking on where it says one tablet, it displays further information. And if I click on action list, this will tell me who ordered it, who prescribed it, uh, as well as who actually administered the med within the system. I'll click close to close that window down. Although I will be covering medication administration within this video, just wanted to point out that the nursing staff will then click on this icon within the toolbar, medication administration, to then administer the meds to the patient. The drug chart also has further features. If, for instance, I right click on a medication, I've got the ability to go into order information and then perhaps go to the history tab to find out some information about when it was ordered and for what purpose. Closing that window down, I can also use these buttons here to adjust the start date one day backwards and to the right one day forward. And there's some useful filters in the top left of the screen here. I can change, for instance, from all active medications to all inactive, all orders with active tasks in the time range and so forth. Going back to the left menu, there's the ability as well to go into the drug chart summary. And this shows you the same medications, but within a larger time frame. For instance, looking at the 27th of December, we can see all the meds that were administered between 6 a.m. and 12 noon. Then the same day, 12 noon till 6 p.m. And if you hover over a medication, you can see who administered it and the date and time that the medication was administered. Clicking on details will display further information. For instance, the action list of which we looked at earlier on within the drug chart. As you can see from the medication list, we have the reconciliation status of the patient's meds. Meds history, currently incomplete. Admission, which has partially been reconciled. And in this case, the discharge meds, which have been fully reconciled. Although we can see this patient's meds reconciliation status, we can't actually open any of this from here. So I'm going to click on the home icon. This brings you back to pharmacist view. Now again, I'm using uh, an IT training account. Let me just change that to pharmacist view. And then from here, you can find those reconciliation icons from home meds and from medications and medical devices. Because when you select these components, the same icons are visible to the right of the screen. I can still hover over them to find out the status. And these icons also tell you the status. This exclamation mark means, means incomplete. This recycling icon indicates partial reconciliation and the green tick indicates full reconciliation. I'm going to click on Meds History, which is an alternate way to get to this screen that we used earlier on for viewing and recording the patient's Meds History. I'm going to click Cancel from here. Clicking on the admission link brings up this window here that the doctors will use to reconcile the patients in patient meds. And on the left, we've got orders prior to reconciliation and on the right, orders after reconciliation. And the doctors will use this green column here, continue, to move certain meds across to the right and also use the red column for discontinuing those meds. I'll click cancel to come out of this window. If I now Select the discharge complete to take a look at what's happened. You can see on the right of the screen all the patient's meds that the doctors prescribed for the patient to take home. They all have a pill icon and the doctors used where appropriate this pill column, otherwise known as create new prescription, for moving across those meds to the right of the screen and the status instead of ordered is prescribed. All the meds can be right clicked and there's a variety of options available to choose from. The doctor would now click reconcile and sign or reconcile sign and print if there was one or more controlled substance on the screen but otherwise I'm going to click cancel to return me back to pharmacist view. Please remember that we have a number of QRGs and videos in connection with the discharge process. As a reminder you'd find the eCoach icon in your grey toolbars at the top of the screen and if you can't locate it go to view you should find eCoach from this list. Once here, from a pharmacist's perspective, if you scroll down the screen, 
we've got that pharmacy section just here and if you couldn't see all the QRGs they look like this click view all and then they're all displayed normally in alphabetical order and one particular QRG of interest for pharmacy when it comes to discharge is this particular item select it and the scenarios within which pharmacy are involved in the discharge meds from an inpatient perspective are recorded within that QRG for a clinician they may want to refer to the inpatient discharge workflow section of eCoach where again there's quite a number of videos and QRGs for both doctors and nurses.